the teaching tonight. I pray, Father, your spirit will live through him. Your life will live through Ernie as he opens the word and teaches us the faith of Christ. We pray all this in Christ's holy name. Amen. 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 All right. Hello, Crystal. I'm going to mute everybody, and then Ernie, we can get started after you unmute yourself. So here, here we go. Okay, can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Elizabeth said, just get going. Don't, don't beat around the bush. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I want to uh, first of all say that I'm not Eric. Um, our names start with E-R, but it <laughs> changes after that. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, I just wanted to, you know, I mean, I think we're all aware of Eric and, and how much effort and time and energy he puts into studying. I've been studying this topic for three weeks uh, when he asked me to do this, and uh, I'm like, I don't know how he does this, like twice a week, wow. So anyways, I uh, appreciate you uh, hanging in with me tonight. And um, uh, the topic that uh, I mentioned, Eric, that I'd like to speak about is the faith of Christ. And it's, it's a hard topic for me because of my background in uh, the way I was brought up in Bible study. And uh, the, the verses that we're going to look at tonight, uh, the way I was taught, I was brought up in Acts 2, dispensationalism, uh, you know, Darby, um, W. E. Vine, all those early brethren that wrote in the 1800s. So, you know, it's, it's the topic of dispensationalism isn't new to me. Right division is because, as you know, I came into it about almost five years ago. Um, but I'd like to, first of all, let's just read the, uh, the verses that we're going to look at tonight. And uh, the first one's found in Romans 1.17. Romans 1.17. Seventeen. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Uh, Romans 3. Um, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Down to verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. Verse 26, But to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just as God, and, that, and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. Let's turn over to Romans uh, Romans 10, 17. We, we all know this verse. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now let's go over to Galatians 2. Galatians 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, 
and not by the works of the law, for the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Um, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Ephesians 3, verse 12. Uh, verse 11 for connection according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him and then finally in Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So we're going to look at this topic, um, the doctrine of the faith of Christ. Now, as I mentioned to you earlier, for me, it, this has been a great study because I've always wanted to understand uh, the concept of the faith of Christ. Now, I mentioned to you earlier that uh, being brought up in, uh, in, uh, with Darby and, and those men, I'm going to read from uh, W.E. Vine. And many of you probably, if you've studied, studied Bible in the past, you go to Vine's Greek words of the New Testament. I mean, that, that is the go-to, right? Strong's Concord, for, for me growing up. Strong's Concordance, Vine's Dictionary of Words, and the 1881 Revised Version. And so what he says on this verse uh, in Romans about the faith of Christ, here's what he says. Faith in Jesus Christ is the correct rendering, not as in the King James Bible. Oh. And he just says it right out. That, that, that's it. So we take scholars, uh, and now I'm not faulting these men. We, we've learned a lot of good things from men in the past, like Darby and Vine and, and uh, men out of the Plymouth Brethren. Excellent. They brought to us the... A recovered truth of the rapture, uh, you know, Schofield and those men of the, that day. But they got caught up in the version issue. Now, uh, I guess, mo I don't know if most of you have have this book uh, by Eric yeah. and Lana. And when you, I thought he made a good point here. Uh, so my point is being that, can you find Galatians from... Uh, my point being is that if you don't have a King James Bible, you're not even going to see the doctrine of the faith of Christ. It's going to be hidden. And you're not going to look for it because you, you won't. Benoit's got the book. Uh, anyway, oh, my secretary just found it for me here. <laughs> uh, yeah, in the Galatians uh, 2.16... Uh, he makes this comment. The faith of Jesus Christ and the faith of Christ in the King James Bible are changed to faith in Christ, as I just demonstrated, and faith in Christ by all non-King James versions, thus taking away Christ's faith and replacing it with man's faith. And that's, that's the issue here tonight that we want to study. What is this doctrine of the faith of Christ? So right off the bat, uh, because a lot of these brethren who changed it, they didn't want to uh, go down that path regarding the faith of Christ. Because if we go down that path, we have to look at the humanity of Christ. And, uh, you know, to their credit, they didn't want to discredit in any way the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the purpose of the study tonight is not to distract or detract from 
the deity of Christ. Uh, it is to uh, enhance and understand the humanity of Christ when he was here on earth. And the faith of Christ, the doctrine of the faith of Christ, displays this beautifully. I feel, now that I've studied it out for myself, uh, that it actually enhances uh, the deity of Christ, and that we see aspects of Christ uh, in his humanity that reflect uh, his deity, even though he had faith. So what is faith? Uh, faith is basically taking God at his word, right? What God says, that's why I read in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So let's just look at uh, let's just look at uh, Hebrews 11 for a minute. <laughs> oh, it's funny when you're by yourself, you can find it like no problem. <laughs> okay, uh, Hebrews 11 verse one. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And his faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the question comes, well, the Lord Jesus Christ is God. And I want to, I want to bring up right at the beginning, uh, uh, the, and, and, and so that we have a firm footing on the deity of Christ. So let's turn to John 1. So, you probably all can quote this, but let's read it. In the beginning was mm -hmm. the Word. And you notice it's capital. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And just a little aside, <laughs> if you look at other versions, it will say all things were made through him. But in the King James, it's all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 14, And the word, capital W, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Lord Jesus Christ could say, He that has seen me has seen the Father. There is no doubt, and I know everybody listening tonight understands the deity of Christ. So by studying this faith of Christ, we want to plant our feet firmly that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is God. Grace and mystery of God is God was manifest in flesh. Uh, if we go over to uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 1, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So no doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the Lord Jesus Christ is God. That's right. So why does he need faith? Okay. Well, let's look at uh, Philippians. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of of the cross. So we see here that the Lord Jesus Christ, he made a conscious decision. You know, we know that 
that, you know, from the conference we were just listening to at Shorewood, uh, want, the first, first thing is volition, right? Free will. So we, we see here the Lord Jesus Christ taking upon himself the form of a man. And he takes the title, and we read it in, in, in Matthew many times over, the Son of Man. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He, he was seeking for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He took upon himself the form of man. He was the only one of the Godhead that took on flesh. So let's go over to Hebrews 1. Sorry to read so much, but I want to back up everything uh, that we're trying to learn about the faith of Christ. I want to back it up with Scripture. That's because right. Because coming into right division, this is what I understand, is we back everything up with with Scripture. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, like many of you were brought up, you know, you know, preachers would just say something and they would just quote a verse, you know, and you don't know where it was from, you don't know the context, but we want to understand these things in context. So, we know that Hebrews was written to the Hebrews. So, but we can still learn a lot from the book of Hebrews. Uh, okay, uh, verse 9. Sorry, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, we learned that in John 1, in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are all one, for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. So we know it's to the Hebrews, so we're talking little flock here. But it's verse 13 I want to focus on. And again, I will put my trust in him. Now, who is the I? That's Jesus. And who is the him? God. I will put my trust in him. So we just want to remember that thought. Um, let's go over to Hebrews 10. Uh, verse... Uh, uh, verse 5, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. Choice. The Lord Jesus said, I come. He was sent to the Father, but he says, I come. Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. So we see the willingness of the Lord Jesus Christ to take upon himself this body that had been prepared for him. So I want us to think uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ came and he willingly took upon himself the limitations of a human body. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, he never felt tired. He never felt hunger. He never felt thirst. But he comes, sin apart, and he comes into this world uh, 
we know that we read in scripture in him was no sin he knew no sin he did no sin so he came he came as the perfect Adam so we want to we're going to explore that in a minute but uh, I'm trying to just roll this out so that we do it step by step in our understanding that the Lord Jesus Christ willingly came into the world the body had been prepared for him uh, conceived of the Holy Spirit uh, you know the word incarnation isn't in the Bible but the act of incarnation spirit taking uh, on flesh and he comes into this world and is born of the virgin. Not like, not a young maiden like it says in the new the new versions. He was <laughs> born of a virgin. So uh, he comes into this world. He takes upon himself this limitation uh, of 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 going through this life. And we read here that in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will. Let's turn over to Psalm. Psalm 40. Sacrifice, I'm sorry, Psalm 40, verse uh, 6. So we see the writer of the Hebrews quotes this from the psalm, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the, of the book that is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. Now that's important. Now remember we said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we see here that uh, prophetically concerning our Lord Jesus Christ, it, said, it says of him, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is written within my heart. Let's go over to Psalm 40 for an interesting uh, prophecy. I'm sorry, I think I said Psalm, I meant Psalm 50. I should be looking at my notes. I'm kind of doing this from, <laughs> from memory. Okay. Psalm 50. I'm pretty sure that's it. Yes. Psalm 50, verse 4. The Lord hath give me, given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as to learn. The Lord God hath opened mine ear. I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, my cheeks to them that plucked up the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. If we have faith, we're not going to be confounded, right? Therefore have I set my face like a flint, just like a compass is set, that I know that I shall not be ashamed. So we see here prophetically concerning the Lord Jesus Christ as said, and we read in Psalm 40 about his ear, his ear, listening. And... Uh, Eric and I were discussing this, and uh, we uh, we concluded. I he agreed with me, and you know that the Lord. And you've heard him say it himself. That morning by morning, he had a Bible study with his father. You see, the law the law was written. On his heart. Now let's score to uh, Psalm one. Hey, yeah. hey Arnie, yes. I hate, I hate to interrupt, but that what was the psalm you just read? Instead, it was Psalm. You said Psalm fifty, but what was it? Oh, no, Isaiah fifty. 
Isaiah 50? Okay. Isaiah 50. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Interrupt me at any time. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, let's look at Psalm 1 for a minute. And, uh, you know, I was, you were probably brought up this way, and I was brought up this way. You know, you read the Psalms for devotionals. You read the Psalms to, you know, give yourself a little pep and, you know, and I remember uh, when my grandmother passed away, you know, I used Psalm 23 and, uh, you know, the Lord is my shepherd and so on. And uh, after Eric uh, straightened me out on Psalm 23 uh, regarding Israel. So when we come to the Psalms, really, uh, the Psalms are really for uh, Israel. They're to uh, explain to them and tell them of the Lord Jesus Christ, tell them about their history, what's going to happen in the future, and so on. So, when we come to Psalm 1, uh, Psalm 1 and 2, think of, you know, when you walk into a foyer of a building, and, you know, there's this, well, like a museum, you know, and they have kind of like, you know, a few things that you're going to see inside, right? And it kind of draws you in, you think, okay, if this is in the foyer, wow, it's going to be great inside once I get inside the museum. Yeah. When we come to Psalm 1 and 2, this is kind of like the vestibule, the foyer of the Psalms. And it draws you in, as we're going to look a little later at Psalm 22, it draws you in because we want to learn more about this man. Look, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsels of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His life, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, you know, uh, I think it's, um, is it Proverbs 20? That's, that was that verse. You know, if I was preaching, I couldn't talk to my wife. If I was up on a platform. Um, <laughs> is it? Yes, okay. Proverbs 20 and 6. Proverbs 20 and 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Now, didn't we read back in, in the Philippians that he thought it was not robbery to be equal with God? He made himself of no reputation, right? Yeah. So, we see here in Proverbs, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. So, when the Lord Jesus Christ came on the scene after 400 years of or so of silence and John the Baptist comes and then the Lord Jesus Christ falls on his footsteps wouldn't you think you know and like it's easy you know where hindsight is 2020 but wouldn't you think like the Lord Jesus said to Nicodemus you know you're a ruler in Israel and you don't know these things I mean you would think they would look at this man of Psalm 1, this one who uh, his delight was in the law of the Lord, in his law he meditated day and night, he demonstrated who he was, but yet they didn't find him, they missed him. But anyways, that's a whole other issue. So we gotta get, we got to get back to the faith of Christ. So we've established that the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he was man, uh, he came uh, through the, uh, the incarnation, the virgin birth. Uh, he came uh, through uh, the Holy Spirit, conceived of the Holy Spirit. We see that he took on himself the limitations of a man. But, and, and, and I think this is, I, I remember it, being a young teenager in a Bible study one night. And somebody used the term, uh, the God-man. And I remember one of our old elders, he, he got in a real flap and he said, 
that is a term we should never use, and he really got upset. So throughout my, <clears throat> my whole Christian life, uh, I've never used that term. But <laughs> I've heard some brethren using it and uh, amongst right dividers. And now that I understand it, uh, it's, you know, our brother, my brethren that I was, grew up with, they, they thought, you know, it was sort of like, uh, you know, you don't want to make him look like he's a superhero or something, you know, the God man. Well, no. If you use it properly, it's not God slash man. And you know that the, the slash means either or. It's not that. Uh, as Richard Jordan explained, it's God hyphen man. It's God and man. Never before in the history of humankind has there ever been such a man who was God, as we said right at the beginning and illustrated from Scripture, he was deity, God manifest in flesh, but yet he was a real man. So, this brings us now to our topic, uh, the faith of Christ. So, let's go back to uh, let's go back to Galatians because this one illustrates it uh, beautifully in this verse, verse sixteen, Galatians two sixteen. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. So, we learn uh, little words make a difference, don't they? Yeah. Like if you're going into a building, the little word in is important. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't want to go in the out, right? <laughs> so in and out, two little words make a big difference. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of Naaman today. Uh, in Second uh, Kings, you know, great mighty man of valor, but <laughs> he was a leper. <laughs> it makes a big difference, one little word, right? Yeah. So, and we think of even now that we come into right division, we come into the but now, but but makes all the difference. Yeah. But in this case, two words make a difference: the of and the in. Right? So the faith of Christ. Well, why does Christ need faith? Well, I think we understand now that he was a man. He came into this world. He's taken upon himself flesh willingly. And uh, let's look over at, I um, hope I can find this verse. Uh, Yes, uh, Hebrews 4, 